I'm Stephan Holt and this is News for Now for Tuesday, October 23rd. First, we'll take a check of the weather. It's going to be cold tonight and much cooler tomorrow. Highs won't break the mid 50s. And now we need to turn to the news and a heartbreaking story. Six children have died in New Jersey after a severe viral outbreak at a medical facility. The adenovirus outbreak hit the Wanakue Center in Haskell, where it has also sickened 12 others. The center cares for children and adults who are seriously ill. The CDC says adenoviruses are common, but can pose real dangers to those with weakened immune systems. The state has ordered the facility to stop admitting patients until it can get the outbreak under control. On Long Island, a shocking twist in a gruesome murder mystery. Laura Katsikorian's dismembered head was found in the Florida Everglades 11 years ago. On Tuesday, thanks to a killer's clue to the I-team, police were searching a wooded area in Oakdale for her body. Paul Truccio, who's currently behind bars along with one other for Katsikorian's murder, told the I-team last week that's where her remains are. Police are following the lead in hopes of bringing closure to the victim's family. Just to have her back, be able to bury her as a whole, and to know that these two are never going to walk in the real world again. We're getting new details about an explosive device left inside a mailbox at the Westchester home of billionaire George Soros. An employee found it, then threw it in the woods and called police. Federal investigators have now confirmed it did contain explosive powder. No word yet on who left it or why. Soros has been a strong supporter of the Democratic agenda and recently become a target of right-wing groups. People have very strong opinions and aggression is being encouraged right now from the top. A murder investigation is unfolding in the Caribbean. A woman from Long Island was found dead last week in the bushes near a club med resort in Turks and Caicos. She's been identified as 61-year-old Marie Kunla. The woman who is a legal aide and attorney was a guest at the resort. Police there say they've launched a full investigation. And finally, a world record jackpot is up for grabs. $1.6 billion on the line in Mega Millions Tuesday night drawing. One mega, one Powerball, right? Yes, the New York Lottery said it was selling almost $2 million worth of tickets per hour ahead of the draw. It only costs two bucks to play, but your odds of winning the grand prize? Well, they're about one in 303 million. That wasn't stopping some. But hopefully I'm going to be winning tonight. And that's all for News for Now. Keep watching after this to see why the largest ship in the Royal Navy has made its way to New York Harbor. I'm Stefan Holt. Thanks for checking in. With an armed Coast Guard escort, we sail into New York Harbor and towards the ship that thousands of ferry riders are passing, many of them wondering, what is that? We are welcomed aboard the brand new British aircraft carrier HMS Queen Elizabeth. At nearly 70,000 tons, this is the Royal Navy's largest ship ever. Say, okay, maybe they need surgery, right. so then we would take them through uh, to here. On board, fully equipped hospital ward, fully equipped gym, and five kitchens to feed 1,500 people. Yes, so we do four meals a day, 24 hours a day. That's uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and the addition of a midnight meal to assist the air crews. The visit comes after the crew trained with the American-made planes that will use the ship's ski jump style flight deck. Well, here on the flight deck, you see what makes Queen Elizabeth special. Like most aircraft carriers, it has a superstructure. This is where the ship is commanded from. But it's the only carrier in the world right now that actually has two of these. There's a second one, and this is where flight operations are directed. So we thought, do you know what? What can we do here that's innovative and new? So we just broke with the tradition, and we kept the navigation and driving the ship in the Florida Island, and we put all the air crew and all the flight ops and the air traffic management people in the back tower. Hurry, hurry, this is sovereign over. And here in New York Harbor, the captain says his ship represents the commitment to meet the threats that have changed the world since 9-11. For decades now, I work so closely together, not least the fact that I'm going to have American pilots and personnel on this ship uh, from next year, just about permanently. And while there are no public visits, ferry riders can at least get close enough to wave to Queen Elizabeth. Michael Gargiulo, News 4 New York.